Hey, it's Gail with Burning of Naperville and I'm coming to you from, yeah, my home studio. I just didn't get a chance to do this during the day today. But what I wanted to do is show you a little bit about how I use the Bernina Embroidery Software 8 or 9, the Bernina Cutwork Tool, and a free pattern from Benner Tex Fabrics and a cute collection called Heart and Home by Cherry Guidry to make a super cute Christmas tree applique. Uh, the pattern actually is just a panel piece with a border around it. We have the kits at the store, so you can check those out at BerninaofNaperville.com. However, you might just wanna make these super cute Christmas trees and a little border as a little welcome sign for the holidays, whatever you wanna do. So I'm basically gonna show you today how to create your own Christmas tree file, how to cut out your trees, and then how to applique them down in two or three hoopings. So this all started when I produced this I am one TikTok video. Now this TikTok done. video has been the one that has been most popular with us. And uh, triangle let's just watch this for a minute and Christmas see what I'm talking about. All right, now let's do it for real. Let's go to the computer first. In your embroidery software, you want to open a new design or have a new design open. And then what you're gonna do is, there's a couple different ways that you can get the design into your computer. You can either work from the PDF and do a screenshot or you can take a picture on your cell phone and send it to yourself. So for instance, if you see this, this is a picture that I took of the actual pattern that was printed up. However, you can also go into your computer. If you've downloaded the pattern, you'll see that you have it here and um, close to the end, there are your templates. So here they are. I'm just going to zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. And then on your computer, there's actually a little snippy tool like this. And you can actually say new. And you can just draw that little box around your templates. And then you can save this as something that you want to name it in a folder where you can find it. and then just close that program and close your PDF software. All right, so doesn't matter which version you decide to use, you can just go ahead and open it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little icon that's called Insert Artwork. And now when I go to Insert Artwork, I saved all these different files in a folder where I can remember where I put the stuff. And you can see here originally, I kind of grabbed all of the files separately. Like I started off with the uh, capture, then I did, you know, all of the ones separately. And I think this actually works out a little bit better for me. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I captured all of these together, but you could just do a screen cap of the tree, then a screen cap of the star and the trunk and so forth. So I'm just going to go ahead to the tree because we're going to work on that one first. And now we want to resize this. So our tree is about three and a quarter and we'll just keep the proportions because the because of the width and I'll hit enter 
and there's our tree. So really we're looking at about three and a quarter from here to here, so I probably made it a little too small. If you're concerned about that, you go to M on your keyboard and that gives you a little measurement. And we can see here, I'm at 2.65 inches, so I'm gonna need to make this just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna select this and I am going to go maybe to three and three quarters, enter. Now let's see, I'm gonna hit M and I'm gonna measure. That gets me to three, so I need to go a little bit more. So I'm gonna escape, select, and simply do four. M. Okay, that's perfect. So we're gonna keep that size. So now I'm gonna escape, and now I can digitize this. And what I wanna do here is take my top of my tree and all of this, and I want to digitize it. So I wanna just do a closed tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a blue fill. That's all I need, and I'm only gonna be left clicking. So I'm left clicking at the top of the tree, I'm left clicking at the other corner, left clicking, and now I'm just gonna hit enter on my keyboard, and now guess what, I've got a shape. Now all I need to do is select my shape. Now I'm working in version nine, and in version nine software there's an applique drawer, and all I wanna do is say convert to applique, and now I've converted my tree. But there's a couple of steps that I wanna do here. And one of those steps is I want to actually change that from a satin stitch to a blanket stitch. So I'm gonna go over here to my object properties and I want a placement line. And then I wanna talk a little bit about this, this cutting line for the applique material we are not gonna use this because I'm gonna show you how to use the Bernina cut work tool. So we're not gonna stop and cut. So we need a placement line, we do not want a tack down line, and we want a cover stitch, and that cover stitch we want to be blanket. And now I wanna just hit apply, move my little window over and see if I like what I see. And indeed I do, so I'm gonna say, Okay, that was all we had to do to make our tree. Now we wanna make the stump. Now for the tree trunk, it's pretty easy. It is a quick little rectangle that we can digitize. And here's our digitizing rectangle. And I'm just gonna draw anything. And that was quick. That was so quick, I probably need to show you again. When you're making a rectangle, you're going to left click, drag, and then click one more time with the left click, and that makes a rectangle. Now I want to select it, and I want to pick the size up here, and I want it to be arbitrary. So I'm going to get rid of the lock, and I'm going to say my width is 2, and my height is 0.5, and I'm going to hit enter and now we have a trunk. Now the only thing about this trunk, if I zoom in, this satin stitching is probably gonna pull a little bit. So I do like the idea of making the trunk satin stitching. So I'm gonna keep it, but I'm gonna pick a different kind of satin fill. And if I go over here to object properties, under my fill stitch, I'm gonna pick satin special. And what that's gonna do is in, when it gets a big jump stitch, it's not gonna like go too far without stitching, but it's gonna hide these little jump stitches so it's not so loose. So do you see what's happened there? It's still satiny, but there's a little bit of um, tack down stitches so it won't be all loopy. Now the final thing I wanna do is click my node adjust tool here 
or my reshape tool. And now I want to move this angle. I want this to be straight up and down. I'm happy with that. And then just so my eyeballs can process, I'm going to make it brown. Is that really brown? Nah, eh, that looks more brown. Okay. So now let's do a quick little to fit. And now I have a tree trunk that is kind of the wrong direction here. So I'm just going to rotate it. There we go. Now I'm going to bring my tree trunk down here. And I'm going to place it right on my tree. But do you see how I'm going to go ahead and hide my image? Do you see how my tree trunk is on top of my tree? Well, I am going to bring out my color film here and I'm going to just left click and drag color film all the way to the top. And now that puts that under my applique. And then I'm going to say to hoop so we can see our tree. So there's our tree. I'm going to do a select all, which is control A. And I can see the size of my entire design is 6.49. So that is easily going to fit in a seven inch border because in our Marion Bright pattern, it is a, you cut a seven and a half inch border, but you know, with, with seam allowances and everything, it makes it seven inches. So we're going to have about a quarter of an inch on the top and bottom for these trees. So what you're seeing here in this large oval hoop is if we wanted to make this tree and embroider this with 32 hoopings, because that's how many trees are in the Marianne Bright pattern. Even if we were doing a small one, like six trees or whatever, I mean, that's still six hoopings and that's a lot. So I wanna design this so that I can make more than one tree in a hooping. So I'm gonna just go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna call this tree 01. Go ahead and say yes to this because that means that I've got like a picture file in there. So now I wanna do some finagling here in the hoop. So I'm gonna right click and I am gonna pick my maxi hoop and actually, I am going to do this with my 26 foot. This is true. I don't like this at start needle position, but everything else looks pretty good. So now I'm going to say, okay, and there's my maxi hoop. Now you saw me rotate that tree trunk and I'm going to do the same thing now with our entire hoop. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So I'm pretty sure if I go to hoop here, that I can space out three trees in a hoop. I want to space these trees out properly for them to go on our border. And our trees are going to need to be four and a half inches apart. And remember how we did our measuring? Well, I can hit measure the M button on my keyboard and I'm going to click and click and see how I put them. I got them at 4.325, so they need to be spaced out just a little bit. But here is my special, special magic trick. I am literally gonna digitize a line, and I'm just gonna go click, click. Now, there are other ways to do this. I don't wanna hear about it. This is the way I did it on this project. So now I want the height to be 4.5, and now I can move my little design here. And now I can move one tree. If I select one tree, I can move that down to go right on the edge. And then I can take my other tree and bounce it up. So now those are four and a half inches apart. And then I just do the same thing down here. Okay. So I'll grab my tree, control C, control B. 
and line up my tree at the end there and delete my line. Three trees. And then of course, I'm gonna save these. Now, word to the wise, if you do not have a maxi hoop, you probably will only wanna do two trees and do those in your, in your midi hoop. Once you've created your trees, you're gonna to wanna to do a few things. And the first thing that I recommend doing is making sure, see over here how we've got all of these different color changes. We're going to actually do this so that they're all gonna stitch out brown, then pink, then blue. And also, I wanna change the color of this blue. So I'm gonna select all of my designs and I'm gonna just go to Arrange, Ungroup, we can see they're ungrouped now, but we see how these two things are still grouped together. That's because they come in kind of glued. So ungroup isn't gonna work on them. We have to go over here to edit and do break apart. And so I'm gonna do the same thing over here, break apart, and the same thing over here, break apart. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna go over here to arrange and I'm gonna do sequence, I've gotta select everything first. I'm gonna go over here to arrange and do sequence by color. And I'm gonna have three color changes now. So I'm gonna do tree trunks, placement stitch, cover stitch. And now this is where I can take my file and make it green so that my trees are green. I am ready to stitch this out except for one thing. I wanna take one of my little pink pieces here, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna control C it. I'm just gonna move this back into place there. And now I'm gonna open up a new file and control V. This is what I wanna to use to make, oops, let's look at this to fit, to hoop, fit to hoop. There we go. This is what I want to use to make my cut work file. Once you have your little design over here, we're going to do some manipulating with it. So I'm going to just right click and drag to make a little copy just like that where it's going to touch like tip to tip. Then I'm actually going to take another design and control C, control V, and now I'm going to rotate that one and I'm gonna place it in here. I'm just trying to optimize my cutting here. And now I wanna right click and drag that one into position. Now, I could also do this the cut work way where I made it a cut work design, but then it's gonna be a little bit higgledy-piggledy with um, cutting and changing the angles on the cutter and whatever. So I'm just basically drawing this shape that I'm then going to design with my cut work digitizing. So I'm gonna go down here to my cut work drawer, and this drawer is called stump work if you're using version eight. So I'm gonna digitize an open cut. And I'm gonna start down here with my left click, 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 enter. So that's created all of my cut lines. Now, I could have also done this by copying, pasting my cut work design and my machine will break down those changes with color resequencing, but then I would get double cuts over here. So I thought it was better to just redo this and it came out pretty accurate for me in my test. 
So now I'm gonna scroll back up here on color film because I no longer need my little pink triangles. So I'm gonna delete those. So when you're ready to send this over to your stick, you can save this as something so that you can remember what it's called. So go to File, Save As, and now I'm gonna call this Four Cut Trees. Sounds like a band name. <laughs> and then I'm going to send this to my file. All right, so then those are ready to go on your machine and cut them out. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So we're going to first cut out our designs and then we're gonna stitch them out on a strip of material. Let's just have a look at what we have here. So I have a stiff stabilizer. A uh, heavyweight cutaway is perfect for this and you wanna make sure that it fits in your hoop. I'm using the maxi hoop just so I have space for that number 44C that we use with the cut work tool to get around properly. Then I've taken my Christmas tree fabric and in this case, I am mixing it up. I'm making a flamingo welcome sign for the holidays. But if you can see on the back here, I have a fusible web that's already been adhered and I have four different fabrics. So I um, am gonna do double this. So in ultimately, when I go to stitch this out, I'm gonna have eight layers that I put on top of this. So I'm gonna have double this stack. So you can see the stack is already rather thick. So I'm gonna cut four more, put it down here, and then we're gonna go over to the machine where I'm gonna stitch it down. So here we are. I haven't put the cut work tool on the machine yet because I'm going to use the needle and this 44 C foot to do some basting. So I have brought my cut work tool into the machine and what I'm going to do is go ahead and say, let's embroider it. Things are going to wiggle around. I'm going to attach my maxi hoop on. Tell the machine, yeah, that's a cool thing to do. And now we're ready. Now let's have a look at what's going on on my screen here. Okay, so I have a few things going on. The first stitch right now says that it's gonna be the cut one of the cutter. But like I said, I don't have my cutter on yet because I wanna add a basting line. And basting, if I push it once, I'm gonna baste just along the perimeter of my design. If I push the basting line again, it's gonna baste within the entire maxi hoop area. If I touch it again, no yellow ring, it's back to just starting off with the cut work. So I'm gonna press it the first time so that it's gonna baste really close to my area. Now, let's direct our attention down to our hoop and I'm gonna place our eight layers of fusible, or excuse me, fusible web on our fabric. So we have fabric with fusible web on it and the paper, eight layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch an initial basting box around my machine or around the design. And this is just giving me a perimeter of where I need to insert my eight layers of fusible web. Fusible web that's already been fused onto my material. That's eight layers, you heard me right. So now I'm just gonna go up a color again. That's gonna let me stitch the basting box again. So that means that I can insert all of my layers right here within that basting box that I just made. So we can just go one layer at a time, covering up that, ooh, it covers. Okay, once you have all your layers done, you're just simply gonna stitch again by pressing the green button.
Now it's time to switch out our little needle for our cut work tool. So I'm just gonna use my tool to loosen my needle. And then when I take out my needle, I also wanna take out the thread and you always wanna remember to pull your thread from the sewing direction. And then when my cut work tool goes in, here we go. Make sure it's on the one right there. So now the rest of our stitching instructions are gonna tell us to move the position. So you can see how we can move from one to two to three to four. So we wanna make sure we're on one. Now it's time to start cutting. All right, so now it's time to move to position two and start. And now it's time to move on to position three. And now to position four. All right, so we have taken all of our pieces and cut them. And man, this thing made no, it was like, it was so, it was like this was butter. Look at all this. So we have cut 32 trees in about five minutes, just so you know. So now I'm gonna take these trees, I'm gonna peel away the paper backing from the fusible web, and now we're gonna, re we're gonna get ready to stitch them on a border. Okay, so now we have a bunch of cut triangles that are gonna be our trees. Now, what I wanna share with you is, if you are wanting to make 32 trees, where we wanna have six across the top, six across the bottom, and 10 on each side, it is easier, in a sense, theoretically, to say, let's use those three trees that we created in our software lesson. However, it has been my experience that it's better to actually take our pre-marked piece here where this is the center line. So this is gonna be the top. This is a horizontal piece and our trees are gonna be four and a half inches apart. It is easier to actually line up our pieces four and a half inches apart with a single tree rather than the little triplets that we made. So I'm gonna turn this around so we can see this properly. And you can see here, so what I have here is about eight and a half inches, nine inches, let's say. And I've drawn a line, a straight vertical line across the bottom. That's where the edge of our tree trunks are gonna go. And here's our center line. And this, this little peak here, that represents where our first tree is gonna go. So the best way to line this up is for me to hoop this up like this so that all three trees will fit in a hoop, but I'm gonna place an individual tree in each spot as I go along. Now, hang on. Listen carefully. If you've made the three trees together and you're like, but Gail, you made me work on these and I worked on these so hard, measuring them and spacing them and doing all of those things, that's great. And that will be awesome when we make our three tree little welcome sign and we have like a little welcome to holiday flamingo or whatever at the top. But if you really want to work on accuracy, because sometimes with embroidery, if you get off by a little bit, you know, sometimes in, 
in in software things there's there's an off by one error and that means every time you you do something you can get just a little off then you get just a little off and then just a little off then what ends up happening is you're off a lot by the time you get to the end so you can save yourself a lot of heartache if you pull in one singular tree and remember we saved that we saved that as tree zero one and then you bring tree zero one and you line it up tree zero one and you line it up tree zero one and you line it up and then boom you stitch them all out in the hoop and that's the way i'm going to show you how to do this right now so here's my maxi hoop with the placement grid in the inside of the hoop so what i want to do now is line everything up so my trees are gonna fit in this i'm gonna slide this into position and i'm gonna hoop this up the bottom part of my hoop and then crank my ratchet down and now everything is in position and i'm good to line up my little trees Okay, so I've switched to the 26 foot and I have this lined up with virtual positioning, not pinpoint positioning, but virtual positioning. And this is at the middle of the tree trunk, right down here and bleh, sticky. And remember my drawn line? So the tree trunk is going right there. And this line now is at the middle of my tree. So you can see it on the screen. So you're going to take the middle of your tree trunk and put it right at the middle of the line at the edge of that drawn space because that line that we drew is right at the bottom at the very edge of our border. So we're going to place the first tree there. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to simply hit our I button and make a copy. So that's so that's going to create another tree and I'm going to touch that right it's delicate situation there but I've touched it right at the middle of the trunk. So now I'm going to look right down here at my hoop and position the second tree. So there we are. And now I'm using my multifunction knobs to move it just into place. And now that's cool. And I'm going to make another copy. And now I'm going to do the same thing where I touch it right at the spot on the tree trunk where I need it to be. Perfect. And it looks just like it's very, very, very close. So now I'm ready to stitch out my design. All right, so now everything is awesome. So we're gonna stitch this. But you can see how accurate that was because we did each tree individually. If there's any kind of shrinkage or things like that, it's gonna be perfect. Or, you know, pretty above standard. So now I'm gonna just stitch my trunk. So it, this starts with going ahead and hitting a button. See how this is brown? And we're in our stitching screen well this thing thinks that there's nine color changes but there's really not so we're going to touch this button and this is the red yellow red well this is really thread color sequencing so now what we're doing is we're going to stitch all the tree trunks together then all the placement lines together and then all the cover stitch lines together so this is a far more efficient way to do things so now 
All I'm gonna do, because I have my brown loaded up and ready to go, we're gonna stitch tree trunks. All right, so our little tree trunks were stitched in no time flat. So now we're going to stitch some placement stitches. And listen, this is the time that our little cut work pieces shine. So we're going to stitch this out. But then, oh my gosh, you're going to be so excited to see how they all can be just stitched down so easy peasy. Yeah. Okay, well, fine. I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna press a button. Okay, so now we have our placement stitches, so it's time. Oh my gosh, this is the time that I love the most. So we're gonna put this down, put this down, and then we have a third one that's out of camera, but we're gonna put that one down. I'm gonna press it and I can press this right in the hoop. Then we're gonna do our tack down stitch and I'm gonna show you how to re-hoop. Magically, we have fused down our pieces and now it's time to carry on with our tack down or our cover stitch color. So this is a blanket stitch. So I don't want to use the brown. I want to use a green, a minty green. I, you know what? I love this minty green. And remember, we're going to pull through the sewing direction. You know, threading the Bernina 880, it's, it's like flossing things. So I'm going to go down through there, through the little lips, cut, press the thread cutter, and Hello, everything is threaded. So now I'm ready to proceed. Look at these awesome trees. So I'm gonna take this out of the hoop and then I'm gonna re-hoop again, just like you saw me do the first time. Then we're gonna place them again, and then we're gonna stitch again. It's really just so much about repetition. You're gonna get sick of doing this 32 times. All right, so here are our little trees. Now, listen, I have a fresh new hooping here, so I'm not gonna joke. We need to kinda of delete some of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go over here into our little layout screen and I'm gonna just go back to our folder and we're gonna pick our tree again. This is just the best way to get a clean, clean slate. So now I wanna touch this right at the tree trunk in the center, the center of the tree trunk. We need to go to the center of the tree trunk. If you have a hard time getting to the center of the tree trunk, you're gonna hit the plus sign. Maybe hit the plus sign twice, you know, it's good, good for measure. And we're gonna just see how our little crosshairs went right to the center of the tree trunk. Okay, so now we're gonna use our multi-function knobs and I'm gonna just move, chill out. We're gonna be moving this for a minute. I hope you had a good day. Hope you did some sewing. All right, so here we go. I've moved this all the way to the top. I'm gonna move it over and over some. Now that is just where I want this tree. So hang on a second, let's look down below and see how this looks. Oh, it's right on the spot. So this is exactly where we want this to be. So now that that one is right where we want it to be, we're gonna go ahead and zoom out a few times just so we're back to our normal screen. Then we're gonna go back 
to here and make a copy. And see how that makes another tree? Guess what? We're gonna zoom in twice and we're gonna touch the center of the trunk again. Get it as close to the center of the trunk as you can. That looks good. We're not micro measuring here, so that is perfect. So now I'm gonna move this back down. into position. And you have to trust me. What? You don't trust me? Okay, fine. Let's look down there. See, I told you, it doesn't get any better than that. So now we just have one more tree to do. There it goes. And now what happens is when we make our final copy, our next tree is going to go pretty much the same spacing. Yes, that's right. Hey, you guys, you have a Bernina. This is why you have a Bernina. But anyway, let's have a look at this. It's perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to stitch again. So that means I'm going to rethread for my brown and just rinse and repeat everybody. Now please remember you're still going to use your stitch sequence button to make sure that all of your tree trunk stitch at the same time. But here we go. Well, it's time to lay down another layer of fabric. And so I'm going to put some pink. Look at that. Isn't that super cute? And then I'm going to add my flamingos on ice skates and then even more. So I'm going to press these down with my Laura Star iron, and then we're just gonna top stitch these again. It's done. It's pretty easy. This is what you have to do for your borders, and then you just add borders to the panel, and then just keep building out. But hopefully this will make your life a little bit easier when it comes to adding applique onto a border. Okay, is this something that you would like to give a try? Is this something that you find to be fun? I mean, I do think it's really versatile. So if you like this video and you wanna see more tutorials, don't forget to check out the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. But in the meantime, yeah, go out there and embroider something. Use that software. You can do it. Go on.